come to worship the Lord. And today we will return to the book of Romans. And we have gone through and we um, haven't looked at Romans 8, 9 to 11 yet. So today we will uh, go to Romans 8, 9 to 11. Uh, before we go into the series of learning about the hope we have in Christ, we continue with the Spirit-led uh, discipleship life. Uh, well, so we praise the Lord that we have the Holy Spirit living in us. Is there anyone here that, loves, that likes to do math? Do you guys like math? You know, math is very challenging, right? And we have to sit there and uh, really work at it until you get the solution. And when you get the solution, you're so excited about it, right? Well, some messages, some sermons come so easy and some come so difficult. I would research it so much and spend so much time on it. And so I asked God to help me because this is one of those difficult messages. I had to like struggle and fight for this message. Um, when we read through this passage, it seems very simple but, and not difficult, but when you start to study it, you see that, yeah, it seems difficult, but then it's very simple. But then when I study more, I see that, oh, yeah, it is simple, not that difficult. So anyways, it's like uh, if someone give you a riddle and you try to figure out the answer to that riddle, and then when they just tell you the answer, it seems so easy. So this passage is like that. It's like sometimes we just have to uh, pray about it and understand it according to God, and then we say, ah, oh, it's pretty simple. It's simple, but very precious. So I would like you to, with me, uh, look at Romans 8, 9 to 11. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If in fact the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. John Stock, Pastor John Stock, this is what he said. The Christian life, the Christian life is essentially life in the spirit. That is to say, a life which is animated, sustained, directed, and enriched by the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, true Christian discipleship would be inconceivable, indeed impossible. So we see that life, the Christian life is essentially life in the spirit. Christian life and the Holy Spirit are hand in hand. Without the Holy Spirit, we cannot live without Him. Truly so, you cannot live without the Holy Spirit of God living in you. Our life is like connected to the Holy Spirit. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that you will open our eyes and our hearts so that we can understand your word and not only just understand the meaning of the verses, but also, Lord, that we will understand the meaning of these verses for our life, in our daily living, in our relationship with you, Father. And Lord, Holy Spirit, I pray that you will shine in our hearts at this time so that my words and the meditations of our hearts together will be pleasing to you. And Lord, give us your po the power of your Holy Spirit and your Holy Spirit to live for you. In Jesus' name we pray this, amen. You know, our life is connected to the Holy Spirit because we have the Holy Spirit living in, our, in us, in our spirit. We live in the Spirit because the Holy Spirit lives in us. The verse in Romans 8, 9, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. We cannot live in the flesh, but we live in, the, in spirit. What does it mean to live in flesh? To live in flesh means to live for ourselves, to live in flesh. We're independent of God. We don't need God. We only rely on ourselves. That is to live in flesh. 
but to live in spirit or in the Holy Spirit. Here it says to live in the Holy Spirit in Vietnamese, but here it's just live in spirit or in the spirit. It's not. It's by the effort, our effort to obey God. It's not. Oh, I have to try to obey God. You have to use my willpower, my willpower to to walk with God, to obey God. It is not by my willpower. No, it is not by our own effort. But it means the meaning of here is that we trust. We trust in the relationship, the good relationship with God. That is, we rely on God's love to to rely, to trust in that relationship that we have with God. That is to live in spirit. For truly, the Holy Spirit of God lives in you. Therefore, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. So the word, the English, the word used is to be. You are not in the flesh. To be not in the flesh. You are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. The word you here, talk in Vietnamese is uh, at the at the beginning as well as in Vietnamese is at the beginning beginning. You and am you. Why is it at the beginning? Because in verse eight it says that whoever lives by the flesh cannot please God. If you live by the flesh for your own self, you cannot please God. But the word in Vietnamese, nhưng but. In English, you, however, however, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. The NIV uses the word in the realm of the spirit. You live in the realm of the spirit. The word realm is the what you live in, right? The 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 area that you're in. Another word for realm. The what? So the realm of the Holy Spirit, right? So the realm is within that boundary board, right? That area that has the Holy Spirit. So we live in the realm of the Spirit. So the word here is you, you, or in Vietnamese is your brother and sisters. You, different from everybody else, right? Those you who have Christ in you. You do not live in flesh, but you live in spirit. So. The word to live in, to live in, not to follow the spirit, but to live in the spirit. What does it mean to be in in the spirit? That is, you are you are controlled by whatever it is that you, is that you live that's in, right? Um, you, in other words, if you're in the flesh, you're controlled by the flesh. You're in the spirit, you're controlled by the spirit. So here. The flesh is not talking about the acts of sin, but it is the tendency to live for yourself, to live for your own self, and to live in spirit. Is that you live in the relationship wherein you trust and love God? That is to live in spirit. So, to have the influence of whatever it is you're in. Whether it's in the flesh, you're influenced by the flesh; in the spirit, you're influenced by the spirit, the Holy Spirit. I remember when I was young, in play coup, uh, we were playing outside, and I looked, I looked up in the sky, and I saw there was an image, a really interesting image. Maybe you have seen this image. That is, there are some very low clouds that go this direction, but above that, there's a layer of clouds that go the other direction. Have you ever seen that? That it goes, the low ones go this way, and the high ones go this way. I uh, looked into YouTube to see this and to research a lot about it a little bit, but I forgot to put the image here for you to see. But yeah, there are some levels of the clouds that there are some uh, winds, uh, whether the wind blow this way or the wind blow the other way. So let's say imagine that I flew a kite. I was flying a kite. And I fly a kite at a certain point, it will fly the one direction. And if I go higher, it will go a different direction. So in the same way, if we are in flesh, we will be influenced by the flesh. We will go according to the flesh, wherever is for our own self. But if we are in the spirit, we will go in the tendency towards the spirit's guidance and leading. So the same way, if we're if we have the Holy Spirit living in us, then we will be influenced or go according to the spirit rather than the flesh. So, if the Holy Spirit is in a person, that person 
is, if that person, if a person is in Christ, then that person is in the spirit. To be in the spirit, the Holy Spirit is the is the realm by which we live in the spirit. Here we have two that is different: the flesh and the spirit. As I have shared with you, flesh is ourself, our own self. We rely on our own self to live. We live for our own self. We do what satisfies our own desires. That is flesh. But to live in the spirit is to rely on God and to trust in God and to love God and to live according to what God desires. The one who has the Holy Spirit of God living in him, will, that person will live in spirit. And the word here, but if the Spirit of God is truly in you, if, if the Spirit, if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you, the word here, if, if, if you use the word if, it kind of uh, um, make you think of, uh, do you really, you question, do you really have the Holy Spirit of God in you? No, that's not the word here as in if. If here is, it's like because, because the Holy Spirit of God truly is in you, therefore you will not live according to the flesh, but we live according to the Spirit. And so because we have this, we, because we believe in Jesus Christ and we have the Spirit of God living in us and we have the Spirit of God living in us, therefore we live according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. I remember there was one time when I went to a post office and uh, that day, the, the line was so long. And if you stand there and wait, it'd be forever. But that day, I had a, a pink slip. When they send you a pink slip that you are not at home and you miss the package. So I, I stood in the line with a pink slip. And so a lady went out and said, whoever has a pink slip, come to this line. And so from the far end, I came up to the front of that pink slip line. So if you have the pink slip, then you can enter first. But that word is if. It's not, oh, I'm doubting that you have the pink slip. It's, be, it's the word because. Because you have that pink slip, therefore you can enter into this line. There's another, um, another illustration is at Disney World, there's Fast Pass. And there are times when you will be standing in rides that are forever, like two hours to get into a ride. But if you have that fast pass, you're, it's great, right? Because you can go through fast with that fast pass. So now, because you have that fast pass and you stand in that long line, is that right? Is that right? No. Whoever stands in that long line will have to wait forever. But because you have that fast pass, don't stand in that long line. Stand in this line to go in and enjoy the ride. So the same way, because we have the Spirit of God living in us, if we have the Spirit of God in us, because we have the Spirit of God in us, therefore we live in the Spirit, not in the flesh. So truly, because the Spirit of God lives in you, you will not live by the flesh, but live by the Spirit of God. And whoever does not have the Spirit of God does not belong to him. Do you have the Spirit of God in you? If you don't have the Spirit of God in you, then then you don't belong to him. But if you do have the Spirit of God, you know for sure that you are belong to God. Sometimes we forget we have the fast pass, but we just keep on going and to stand in the long line. Sometimes it's like that. So Paul reminds us, you have the Holy Spirit of God. Don't stand in that long line. Stand over here to get in. You have the Holy Spirit of God. Don't live in the flesh. Live in the Spirit. Live according to the 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 wind that blows according to the spirit guided by the spirit so after i share with that with you do you see that that's pretty simple yes right so simple so the second point though is that when we live in the spirit how does it show forth manifestations of the spiritual life if you live in the spirit what are the manifestations how does it illustrate or show forth so that we know that we are in Christ. First of all, you are regenerated. You are born again. You are regenerated. You are given a new birth, a new life. You have the Spirit of God living in you. You have a new life in Christ. 
That is the first thing, is that if you have the spiritual life, is that the Holy Spirit gives us regeneration. In Titus 3, 4 to 5, God saved us not because of works done by us in righteousness, but according to his own mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewal of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit gives, gives us that regeneration, that new birth. When does it happen? When we kneel down and submit to the Lord Jesus as our Lord and Savior. When you exalt Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and rely on his salvation, then you become a child of God. Then the Spirit of God dwells in you, lives in you. And so the main point is that you believe that only Jesus can save you. Only God can save us. God saved us. Very simple. If you believe, you have eternal life. And those who do not believe in him, the Son of God, then the condemnation of God is still upon that person. Do you believe that? If you believe that, I believe that Jesus Christ is God, that he is the Savior, the one that who created me, then you, from truly from the depth of your heart, you believe that. Then the Bible says that by believing in the heart, that you uh, have salvation and by your mouth confessing that you are saved. So it is by faith, by faith in the, what Jesus Christ has done to save us from our sins. We are saved not by what we do, not by our righteousness, but by what Jesus Christ has done and by the uh, renewal and regeneration of the Holy Spirit. And the second, second manifestation of the spiritual life is that we will glorify God. Why is that? Because Jesus Christ glorifies God the Father. And the Holy Spirit glorifies Jesus Christ. So if the Holy Spirit lives in us, then he will glorify Jesus Christ. Jesus said that the Spirit of truth will glorify me, for he will use what I have shared with you to proclaim to you. So. The Holy Spirit came to us not to glorify himself, but to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. So we know that when we glorify and live for Jesus, then we know that we are living in the realm of the Holy Spirit. We're living in the, the, the realm of the Holy Spirit. And so thirdly is that we manifestation of the spiritual life is that we will obey, right? Obedience, submit to God. Yes, in John 16, 14, the spirit of truth will glorify me for he will take what is, oh, sorry, <laughs> Psalm 143, 10. Teach me to do your will for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. Okay. So the fourth thing is that to the manifestation of the spiritual life is filled with hope. So the third is to submit to God. And the fourth is that we will be hopeful. We'll be filled with hope. The Holy Spirit gives us that hope. In verse 13, may the Spirit of God fill you with hope so that by the uh, power of the Spirit, you will be filled with here. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you, you are filled with love, God's love, so that you will have hope in Him. And also, we grow and mature in God. The one who lives in the spiritual life, then they will mature. They will mature and know God's Word. They will understand God's Word and live by God's Word. That is one who is mature. That is, the Holy Spirit will reveal God's Word to us. The Holy Spirit will uh, explain the, Holy, the Word of God to us. Um, Paul and Peter, they don't know, know what to write down, but the Holy Spirit manifested God's Word to them so that they can write God's Word down. And then when we study God's Word, when we read God's Word, we don't understand God's Word, but the Holy Spirit will explain God's Word to us. And then when the Holy Spirit lives in us, one who is maturing God will obey God's Word. In 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 2.10, These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. So God has revealed to us through the Spirit. When you come to read the Bible, ask God, God, open my eyes so I can see the amazing things in your laws. Don't just open the Bible so that you can fall asleep. Some people come and testify and say, oh, I can't fall asleep, but I take out the Bible and then I fall asleep really well. No, 
May the Lord help us so that we can understand God's word through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit teach us His word. That is to live in spiritual life. That is, we will grow more and more in the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You probably memorized the the fruit of the Spirit, right? Joy, peace, love. I don't remember in English. <laughs> but I don't know it in English at all. Um, you know the fruit of the Spirit. Joy, hope, love, peace, kindness. Um, you know, when you plant a tree, right, uh, a seed, you will wait forever for it to grow up. Maybe three years, a uh, mango tree for it to have, or longans. It would take three or four or five years to have the fruit, right? So we know that in, in the Word of God, it's not like night and day that you have the fruit of the Spirit. We grow, we mature each day to uh, grow in joy, in peace, in kindness, in patience, in uh, long-suffering, all that. That's the fruit of the Spirit. We grow each day more and more. And then we have the next is that we hate sin and we love holiness. To hate sin and love holiness. That is the life of a person that walks in the Spirit. Um, in Galatians, oh. in 1 Thessalonians 4, 7 to 8, For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. God has not, ca has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. So therefore, in the Holy Spirit, we will hate sin and love holiness. Hate sin, Why? Why do we hate sin? God hates sin, and God hates the sinners. Wow, you say, how can that be? God loves the sinners. No, do you know what? God hates sin, and he also hates the sinner. Why is that? Because God hates sin. But praise the Lord that he loves us, though we are sinners. He loves us. So therefore, if he does not come to us, th there's no hope. Hate. Hate is we know that that is not good for us, right? If we know that something is going to harm our body, we will hate that thing, right? If the Russians go against Ukraine and it kills our loved ones, how can we love the Russians? Though we are children of God, we are to love those people, though they are sinners, yet we cannot accept their sin. So that is the way it is. The same way as children of God, we hate sin, but we love holiness. And if we are in the Spirit of God and we're in the realm of the Spirit, then we will see that as we are in the Spirit, we will hate sin more and more and love righteousness more and more. For the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is Spirit, not just Spirit. He is Holy Spirit. He is holy, therefore he works in us to transform us to be more like him so that the, whole, the Lord Jesus Christ will take form in us and that the love of God and his truthfulness and holiness will become real in our lives. And then next is when we're in the spiritual life, we will have gratefulness. We will have praises and sing praise to the Lord and be joyful and be grateful and thankful to the Lord. One who is not in the Holy Spirit will not be grateful to the Lord. But those who are filled with the Spirit of God in their hearts, then there is a song that comes from their heart just to sing out. Uh, Dr. A.W. Tozer, he sings not well at all. So every time he praises the Lord, he will cover his mouth and praise the Lord so he can, only God hears him. But he always prays the Lord. Sing praise to the Lord. We need to be filled with the Holy Spirit to, in all things, giving thanks. Be filled with the Spirit, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're filled with the Spirit, what happens? Singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. I, I'm very joy, happy and joyful. Every time I stand in the front here, in the front pew, to sing praise to the Lord, I love it. And if I hear someone in the back singing loud, I'm so happy. But on days that people are not really singing, I'm like, why is that? We are those who have Jesus. Why are we not singing? We are those who are filled with the Spirit. Why are we not singing? Why don't we sing loud to praise the Lord? 
to sing praises to the Lord, making melody to the Lord, and giving thanks to the Lord always. Giving thanks always and for everything for God to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why is that? Because we are in spirit, not in flesh. We have the Spirit of God living in us, therefore we live in spirit. And another point is to grow, mature in prayer. One who lives in the Spirit will grow in prayer, not just pray out of habit, or you have memorized a prayer and you just repeat it over and over again. But no, you have a true relationship with God, fellowship with God, and using the Word of God to pray. The Holy Spirit will help us in our prayer so that we will pray in the Spirit. The Word of God tells us to pray in the Spirit. Ephesians 6, 18. Using all uh, ways of prayer to pray. And to know praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. So we say, Lord, what do you want to do? And when I pray, reveal me your will so that I pray according to your will, Lord, and then he will accomplish his will in our lives. That is to pray in the Spirit. So place this as a goal that you will pray, pray in the Spirit and pray for all the saints in supplication for all the saints. And so the ho if you're in the Holy Spirit and if you're in the Spirit, then the Lord will help you to grow in your prayer life. And I pray so that we have revival prayer meetings in the week. And I hope that more people will come and that we have more prayer times. Because when we have the Spirit of God in us, we, the next is that we will share about Jesus to others, to evangelize, to tell others about the Lord. If we haven't done it, then pray and be in the Spirit so that He will help us to tell others about the Lord Jesus Christ. For when He, in Acts 1.8, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come into, upon you and you will be my witnesses in South Florida, in America, and throughout the whole world, right? In Jerusalem, in Judea, into Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Because everyone needs the Lord Jesus Christ. The Mexicans, the Spains, the Haitians, the whoever it is, everyone needs the Lord Jesus Christ. So don't limit it to just to share with the Vietnamese. Share with everybody around you about the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't wait just to wait. Uh, I'm just going to share it to, to the Vietnamese. No. Talk to your neighbors about the Lord Jesus Christ. Talk to your friends. And that's how we show them that we're a child of God and that they will come to Christ. I remember one time when I was going into um, the mailbox. If you know, I live in a community, a uh, townhouse community. And in the new community, we know each other. So there's this one uh, neighbor, his name was Alex, at the end of my unit. And one day, I went to the mailbox, and he said, oh, you're a pastor, right? And I said, yes. And so I started to, and he started to share with me um, his difficulties. And so I, I shared with him about the Lord Jesus Christ, and I prayed with him to, to faith. And so it can be anyone, anyone around us. And I praise the Lord for my mother-in-law. She's very, very diligent. Um, she doesn't speak English very well, but her, neighbor, her, her neighbors know her. And when she was well, she would make them egg rolls and would bring it to the neighbors. She couldn't say much, but she would invite them to come to church. And so once in a while we see Americans come to the church, she invited them to come. That is the spirit of evangelizing, telling others about Jesus Christ. But you will, you will see power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Al Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. That is living in the spirit. And when we live in spirit, then the spirit life will become essential because the Holy Spirit is in us. Because the Holy Spirit is in us, therefore the spiritual life will become essential. In Romans 8, 10, but if Christ is in you, but because, the word if, but because Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. So these two seems to be like um, they, no, they know. Uh, yeah, the body is dead because of sin. The spirit is life because of righteousness. So when I read this, I see something amazing that is interesting. That is, we can study this in the uh, root meaning of it, in the original text. Uh, if you 
pay attention. In English, the word dead, the word dead here means, actually, the word dead here is an adjective. The body is dead. It's an adjective, a dead life, right? But the word life is a noun. So you don't say the body is death. Death would be a noun, right? But the body is dead. It's an adjective. It, it uh, illustrates or describes this body, the dead body. But the spirit is life, not alive. Not the spirit is alive, but the spirit is life. It is a noun. So these two phrases like compares each other. It's like it's a little bit different. Why is it a little different? Why is it that? Uh, why don't you compare an adjective to an adjective, an adjective to an adjective? But why are we using a noun to compare with an adjective? Why don't we say the body is death and the spirit is life, a lot, life? But the word spirit here is difficult. Here is that in that when we speak in its original text is the word noma. Noma is air, air that you breathe. So the, the in the original meaning in in Old Testament is rua and in English and New Testament is numa. Anyway, it's talking about the, uh, it's like when you go to numa pneumatologist. Uh, yeah, it's numo it's the lung. Right? Numa pneumothorax lung. So pneuma is, is talking about air. So here it's talking about pneuma is spirit. It's talking about air, that breathe, air to breathe. The, our spirit is life. In ESV, it says the Holy Spirit. Well, this is why I get really, really uh, have to squeeze my mind about this, is that truly this is not talking about the Holy Spirit, but it's about our spirit. Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit does not live because of righteousness. The Holy Spirit is alive. He's life. He doesn't have a reason to live. But we, our spirit, needs a reason to live, right? It is by righteousness that we live. Not the Holy Spirit relies on righteousness to live. The Holy Spirit is life already. So here, I believe that the, the Vietnamese translated this very accurately. That is, that we live by righteousness that we, our spirit lives, our spirit lives by righteousness. Our, our spirit is life or lives because of righteousness. So I would like to share, explain to you that Christ in you, on one hand, a part of us dies. Our body is in the state of death. It's like the moment you are born and you take your first breath, you're on your way to death, right? You're born, you take your first breath, you will not live forever, right? There will be an end to your life. So though your body is dead on one hand, on the other hand, your spirit is life because of righteousness. Why does that mean? What does that mean? That is, that our spirit becomes essential, it's our life, it's essential for our life. In the past, when we have not come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, that we don't have the spiritual life. We live for this life, we live for our flesh, we live for ourselves. We live and we're concerned about our body, this body. How do I have health, uh, take care of my body so that I don't get sick? You're afraid of getting sick, you're afraid of dying. That is what people's thinking is. What am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? What kind am I going to wear? All those things which the Gentiles do. But when we have the Lord Jesus Christ living in us, now the essential life of ours is the spiritual life. The spiritual life is essential, it's needed. Whatever you do, whether you are a dentist, an engineer, a teacher, an optometrist, a pharmacist, whatever it is, a nail tech, whatever it is, our spiritual life it's essential, it's important. We live not for ourselves, but we live for the one who died and resurrected for us. So now, our concern is not for our flesh, but our concern is to live for Christ in the spiritual realm. That is, that's the, that's the meaning of the spirit is life. 
because of righteousness. What does it mean, because of righteousness? That is, we live because of righteousness. That means everything centers around the righteousness that God gives to us. We praise the Lord that He considers us righteous. We are righteous. What does it mean to be considered righteous? What does it mean? That is a proclamation to proclaim that this person is righteous, right. It's pretend that you're in front of a judge and there are two, two, what? No, like uh, in the end, what the verdict, thank you. So verdict, whether you are righteous or you're, you're guilty or not guilty, right? That's the verdict. So the verdict here before God the Father is that in Jesus Christ, we have a, a righteous verdict because of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ puts on his righteousness in us. Therefore, we have a right relationship with God and we are accepted by God. Therefore, we're able to come to God and he considers us as a righteous person by what Jesus Christ has done for us. So we know that one who is proclaimed righteous or considered righteous before God is one who has faith in Lord Jesus Christ. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life. In Galatians 2.16, yet we know that a person is justified through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ. We who are sitting here, we have placed our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We are justified as righteous. I don't know how you feel, but I feel, I see that I'm a, a sinner. But how is it that God considers me a righteous person? But if a judge says that this criminal is not guilty. Sorry. I missed it. Why is it that God considers us righteous? though we are a sinner, is because Jesus Christ has taken on all, his sin, all our sins upon himself. He died on the cross. He took on all our sins. And so the punishment has been on Jesus Christ. So therefore, standing before us is Jesus Christ and before God. Therefore, God considers us righteous because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And so now we are righteous before God all totally because of what Jesus Christ has done for us by his grace. So therefore, the devil says, oh, you're a sinner. Who are you going to believe? Are you going to believe that you are a sinner before God or are you going to believe that you are righteous before God because of Jesus Christ and what he has done for us? He has died on the cross for us, for our sins. He has cleansed us from all our sins and made us righteous before him. So Jesus Christ becomes our righteousness and he... Therefore, we have righteousness. We are righteous. If we talk about our actions, our attitudes, our words, our deeds, we are sinners before God. But praise the Lord that in Jesus Christ, we are united with Jesus Christ, and therefore, He has taken on all our shame, all our sins, all our iniquities. Jesus Christ has carried it all, taken it all on the cross. And now, we receive Jesus Christ, we receive his righteousness. This is an unfair exchange, right? What an unfair exchange. That is, we give all our, our sins to Jesus Christ, and he took on all our sins, all our evilness on the cross. We, like sheep, have gone astray, yet God has placed, placed one sin, two sins of ours on Jesus Christ? No, yet God has placed all our iniquities, all our sins upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And praise the Lord for that. So all now, all the righteousness of Jesus Christ is in us, on us. He has placed on, on us. What a great exchange. What an unfair exchange. Yet Jesus Christ was willing to do that because he loves you and he loves me. Therefore, he took on himself our sins. And the Bible says what? In 1 Corinthians 1.30, And because of him, you are in Christ Jesus, who became to us wisdom from God, righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Jesus Christ became righteousness and sanctification and redemption for us. He is wisdom from God. He is righteousness, our sanctification, and our redemption. That is Jesus Christ. And now, not only are we considered righteous, but the Holy Spirit of God lives in us so that we become righteous people. So, 
if you want to become a scholar, what do you have to be? First of all, you have to be a student. You have to become a student, then you can become a scholar, right? But in the first day, when you enter into college, you're a student, right? And then what does that student have to do? You have to study, and then you grow in your knowledge. The same way, God considers us righteous before God, and truly we are righteous before God. And now the Spirit of God lives in us to help us, to guide us, to empower us, enable us to live a righteous life. In 1 John 3.10, By this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is the one who does not love his brother. So that is a righteous life. A righteous life is to live in the love of God, to live in a, right, in a, in a good relationship with God. And then the third point is that the, resurrection, the resurrected life of the body will also be given through the Spirit. This is the third point. We know that this body of ours will not live forever. You can spend 10 hours a day to have six packs, or you uh, stand in front of a mirror to prepare yourself hours before you leave the house. It's not worth it. Yes, but God wants us to take care of this body. We cannot abuse it because the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so God really wants us to respect and take care of the body. But we will be resurrected, not only in the spirit, we will be resurrected in the body also. God takes care of our body and he will give us a resurrected body, a body that would, not ever, that would ne never perish, never die, never corrupt. God will give us that resurrected life of the body. So the word of God says that, that the one who causes Jesus Christ to raise from the dead, he too will give his spirit to, and the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. So this is talking about what? Is it present life or future life? No, it's talking about the future because he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. This is body. This is a mortal body. Sooner or later, we will leave this body, right? I don't, I don't know how, when it will be, the, but this body will die. But we will be resurrected in a new body, in the resurrected body. Jesus Christ died, and the Holy Spirit caused him to live again in the resurrected body. And the resurrected body, body of Jesus is the risen body of Jesus Christ, and we too will have the resurrected body. Jesus Christ is the prototype of the resurrected body, and we too will have that. Jesus Christ truly lived, uh, resurrected in the body with the flesh and bone and everything. That's why Jesus said to Thomas, look at my body, come, touch, my, touch the nails in my hands and the side uh, that was pierced. And so the same way, we too will have a resurrected body, the, bo the body that God gives to us. Jesus resurrected from the body will cause us to also resurrect from this mortal body in the day that he returns again. Though a person who has died, whether cremated or whether they were thrown into the ocean and the fish ate them up or the ocean animals ate them up or they were buried in the ground, when Jesus comes the second time, that body will be resurrected in a resurrected body no longer to die. <laughs> Some people say, and no longer to be bald. No, well, or no longer to be, you know, um, imperfect. We will be having that resurrected body. Because the Holy Spirit lives in us, we have the resurrected body. We will have the resurrected body. And so the body is very important. This body is a vessel for us to live in. So we spend time to take care of it but don't spend so much time in it. Don't, that, that's not the essential part of our life. It's the spiritual life that's essential. So take care of the spiritual life. Without Jesus Christ, we will, our life will be meaningless. It will have no meaning. It's like the bumper sticker behind a car. Well, life is tough, and then you die. That's what the bumper sticker say. Life is tough, and then you die. And even if you live to 100 years old, and you 
live suffering, then what benefit is it? But if you have the Spirit of God living in you, if you have Jesus Christ living in you, if you have the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ living in you, then your spirit lives and you live in the Holy Spirit. And you will not go according to the tendency of the flesh, but you will go according to the tendency of the Holy Spirit. And you will go to higher, higher level in your spiritual life. And you will do accomplish the 10 points that I have shown with you. That is, we'll have a, um, uh, uh, you will have peace and hope and joy, and you will live in a holy life, and you will have become a, a person that is God can use to bring his blessings to others and to bring others to his truth. And no matter when you will leave this body, you will know you will have the hope that the one who caused Jesus Christ to raise from the dead, he too will raise you and give you life to your mortal bodies. Maybe you've heard of D.L. Moody. D.L. Moody say, not too long, you will read, you will um, read that I die. But guess what? I will at that time live more than ever. That you will read in the newspaper that I die but don't even grieve for a moment because at that moment, I am more alive. And so praise the Lord that when we live in this life, we live in this body, we don't live for this life, we don't live for this body, we live in spirit, we live because the Holy Spirit of Christ lives in us and the spiritual life is essential in our life. We live for Christ, we live by Him and for Him and because of Him and we will live forever with him. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for your We thank you we have the spirit in us. That way we no longer live by the flesh, but we live for the spiritual life becomes essential for us and we will live forever in heaven with God. And we will resurrect when the Lord comes again or whenever he returns, we will be taken up with him. May the Lord help us to live a worthy life for him, not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit of God and the guidance under the guidance of God, that your name be glorified, your kingdom come, your will be done. And in Jesus' name,